Uh, good evening, everyone, to yet another IHW Council uh, space. Uh, psoriasis is a chronic and a non-communicable, painful, and a disfiguring, disabling disease for which there is no cure, and with great negative impact on the patient's quality of life. Uh, while it can occur at any age and is most common in the age group of 59, 50 to 69, there is a report that it's... Uh, in the the, uh, the country the various country the the uh, the reports have been from 0.9% to 11.4% making psoriasis is a serious global problem good evening and welcome to you all in another panel on everything you need to know about psoriasis it is an initiative by ihw council along with, uh, which is powered by onnet i am ridhi lakra assistant editor ihw.tv Although there is a suggestion that psoriasis could be an autoimmune disease, no, uh, it can be also responsible and it's not uh, an uh, it's an auto uh, it is described as an autoimmune disease and no anti uh, antigen that could be responsible and has been defined yet. Psoriasis can also be proved by external and internal triggers. including mild trauma sunburn infection systematic drugs and stress while we talk about the challenges for the people with psoriasis there is a significant cost to the mental well being such as higher rates of depression leading to negative impacts of individual and society there is another important thing which we have to discuss is the social exclusion there's discrimination and the stigma are the uh, um, along with the psychological devastation for the individuals Suffer, especially suffering from psoriasis along with the family members it is not psoriasis that is psoriasis that is causing the exclusion it is largely the society's reaction to it and that can be changed to create an awareness about the disease we have we have with us panel uh, uh we have with us uh, professor dr dj saple uh, he is a senior dermatologist Professor Saple is a honorary consultant at the Breach Candy Hospital. Uh, he is also uh, al uh, along with the All India Institute of Diabetes and S L uh, Raheja Hospitals, Mumbai. We welcome you, Doctor. Uh, we have with us. Uh, we also have with us Doctor Sanjeev Kandari. Uh, Doctor Kandari, uh, he is an MD and a consultant dermatologist. Uh, we welcome you, Doctor. Thank you. Uh, we have Dr. Kiran Gotse with us. He is a professor of dermatology uh, at the uh, Dr. Uh, D. Y. Patel Medical College and Hospital, and he is also a consultant dermatology uh, at the cos and cosmetology at the Fortis uh, Hira Nandani Hospital, Mumbai. We welcome you, Doctor. Uh, as we were talking about uh, to understand about the disease psoriasis. Uh, a very important disease which a lot of people are aware about and a lot of our population is still not aware about that uh, to firstly to understand uh, i would would like to start with dr uh, professor saple uh, uh, professor saple so can you tell the viewers what is psoriasis and uh, what uh, is exactly the disease and uh, in what way it can be acquired uh, Ridhi, about talking about psoriasis. Psoriasis is a very common disease. In fact, almost they say one to three percent of the world population they are suffering from psoriasis. is a large number. They said about 125 million people are suffering across the world of psoriasis. Psoriasis previously it was considered as a skin disease. but now it has been proved beyond doubt it is systemic disease in in fact the inflammation is going on in our systems that means it is not confined to the skin but it can affect your heart it can affect your kidney it can affect liver it can affect your blood sugar so previously it was thought of a skin so it was only was treated by the dermatologist but now it is considered systemic inflammation and because systemic inflammation this can cause the problem of your health and there is a data they said anybody gets psoriasis 
their life uh, life shortened by three to five years, even it is male or female. So it's a deadly disease if you are not noticed and if you are not taken treatment. But as you say, it's not curable, but it is hundred percent treatable. But not curable if you say people they'll go into negative thinking, but it's a hundred percent treatable. So if the psoriasis patient they come forward, they come early, they know they are suffering from psoriasis, they take treatment. I'm sure we can treat this uh, disease and not to worry, and we can prevent all these complications or the sequelae is going to happen. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sapri, for that introduction to, and to understand about the disease much better. Uh, Dr. Kandhari, as Dr. Uh, Sapri was telling about, like it is becoming, it is affecting lives of people. So how exactly it's, uh, the disease uh, psoriasis is affecting the people's life? And has it become a very common disease, especially in India? Yes, uh, you know, in my own personal uh, experience, the, it is between 1% to 3% in my clinic and all over India. That's approximately the population prevalence that we have of psoriasis. And I agree with him that it is predominantly a systemic disease. First, we used to consider it's a skin disease. Now it's a systemic disease. And it is immune mediated, gives rise to inflammation, then gives rise to proliferation. By, me, by proliferation, we mean increased rapidly multiplication of the cells. And all this while it is going on in the skin, is also going on systemically. So it gives rise to comorbidities in addition. This stimulus or the trigger, there are two triggers. One is a genetic trigger and one is the environmental trigger. There is a focus which we call a psoriasis susceptibility focus, SORUS1, which is the genetic trigger. So let's say one parent is affected then approximately 10%. And if two parents, then approximately 40% children tend to get it. As far as the environmental factors are concerned, there are lots of them, like infection is a very common stimulus or a trigger. So something which we call a super antigen, then there is stress, it's alcohol intake, auto antigens, trauma, smoking, all this can trigger this whole process. And given this thing, there is inflammation, which then affects not only the skin, but also the systemic component. Anything else on this? Uh, I want to come to Dr. Gotse on the same lines, like uh, we, we were talking about the various risk factors. But actually, who are, uh, you mentioned about, uh, as Dr. Kandhari also mentioned about the, uh, there are parents also, like their genetic factors also involved, like the, uh, if the mother is having, then the child will have, if both are having, then the chances increases. So are they like, uh, is the disease uh, like found in the early age only at the younger age or as the age grows, it develops? Yeah, now typically psoriasis affects 3% of the population that you can understand of huge India's population, how many are suffering. It starts typically the highest peak is at 20 to 30 years and one at 50 to 60 years, but childhood psoriasis is also known. So... Uh, but the two peaks, what you see in a young adult and maybe between 50 and 60. Well, what triggers uh, is uh, obviously many things, but the stress, sunburn, alcohol, smoking, few of the drugs, then the allergy, extreme dry skin and infection are the triggers which can actually start the process. It can start as just a red scaly patch or on the elbows or on the scalp and slowly increases. Uh, and what happens exactly here is our whole body skin changes every four weeks. Our cell turnover is four weeks. But in psoriasis, it is four days. So every four days, our whole skin changes. So that's why you see those dead skin or which is known as uh, micaceous scales are very common, typically on the bony prominences. That's the presentation and which is often taken lightly by most of the patient thinking that it is some dryness and they just go about it or do some self-treatment. Thank you. Riti, I would like to add here. Yes, sure. Dr. As Dr. Godse says, the age-wise, that is very important. It can occur in any age. But as Dr. Godse says, usually it's 20 to 40. And that is the age 
of productive age and where the population has been affected. So it's a very important point because many people, there is a data that about they miss 26 days of working days from their job because of they having psoriasis. This is the social impact of psoriasis on the productivity. And our national productivity goes down because most of the people suffer between 20 to 40 age. Uh, Doctor, uh, uh, Sapte, I want to come to you again and ask. Uh, so, uh, like, if somebody is new, I mean, they don't understand what is the disease. So, how do would they see the symptoms? Are they like a regular symptoms, like as you described, there's the skin rashes, the skin burns, or um, are there other uh, symptoms in the body? There are changes apart from the skin uh, that people can actually understand. This is an other disease. They come with uh, skin rash only, but there are various type of skin rash. Sometimes they come with a dry rash, sometimes they come with the patches, and usually these patches are in the particular, initially, you get what you call extensor aspect, that is outer aspect of the hand, outer aspect of the leg, and involvement of the skin, what we on the back. So they come with the skin, sometimes they get red patches of the skin, and scaling, scaling means scales comes out, the peeling of the skin, and in almost 20 to 30 percent, they get involvement of the joint, but usually they come with a skin rash. And this skin rash slowly, slowly increases if they do not take treatment in many percent of the patient, it may go on increasing and it may, it may spread to more than 25 to 35 percent of the skin and they will have more systemic effect and they hardly come with systemic because they are not known, but they come for skin rash only. And usually they tell if there is history, as Dr. Kandari said, the family history is there. They tell, you know, today morning one patient came to me of psoriasis. They said, sir, please note down my Masi and my cousin brother, they have psoriasis. Do you think I have got the same thing? So the patient came to rule out, you know. So that family history is also very important. Uh, Doctor, as you mentioned about the family history, so a lot of people uh, do have such skin diseases and they also compare it with their family members and they come. So is it a right way? And then uh, the, we, as we were talking about medication, so they start their own medication that uh, I might also have psoriasis. So is it a right way or when uh, should a person consult a doctor? Uh, Dr. Kandhari, I want you to answer this. When a person should actually consult a, a specialist uh, like in such cases? I think uh, the moment you start noticing a rash, that is the right time to see a specialist. You see, but most people feel that it's a minor rash. The important thing to know about the rash is that usually it is always symmetrical. That means it occurs on both sides of the body. It usually involves the extensors. That means wherever friction can happen. So wherever friction is supposed to aggravate psoriasis. So wherever friction can happen. So it's like elbows knees, head, back. That's the place where you basically have friction or your palms and your soles. Now, the important thing in this is most people would come to you depending upon their emotional quotient. If there's a lady, for instance, you know, if she gets even one spot, she's worried. There's another person who's not a very well-to-do person. He may not be bothered and he just carries on with his life. So it can vary upon your emotional portion and how much are you concerned about how you look in that particular disease or how much it is bothering you. For instance, in palms and soles, it can be an occupational hazard. You see, if you are having scales on your hand and it's cracking, it can be painful. So you can't really work. So if you can't work, it can interfere with so many things in your life, obviously. So the quality of life and your earning potential can go down. So that obviously means that he will come to you much earlier than another. Then there is another kind of psoriasis in which the whole body is involved, what we call erythrodermic or pustular, in which little, 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 little pus points forms. But they are not actually pus filled with bacteria. They are sterile. So, you know, 
again on the head if it occurs on a lady or a male and it is seen naturally he'd come earlier so it all depends you know uh, what is your emotional quotient which part of the body is involved so and how much is it affecting your life which will determine whether he will come to me or not come to me. another important aspect in psoriasis is that it is having comorbidities you know comorbidities like obesity hypertension lipids can be involved it can lead to diabetes then arthritis it can have a liver problem inflammatory bowel disease lymphomas and sometimes depression and anxiety all these are a part and parcel of what we call comorbid conditions of psoriasis because of the inflammatory component which is there in the skin and the systemic process that means inside the body what is going on in the skin is also happening inside the body which is involving this whole process so you know if those things are involved then obviously the earlier the patient will tend to come earlier and you need to be much more aggressive in these patients uh thank you dr kandari uh, there is another thing dr gotse i want to ask like there are types of uh, psoriasis so is there a thing that uh, people can understand these are types and uh, or only the expert can understand this uh, during the part of, as a part of the diagnosis yeah so types are one as per the position of the body but other is how it looks like so the chronic plaque psoriasis is the commonest you can see a red scaly plaque on the body generally on the bony prominences that is the commonest type almost 80% of the people then the psoriasis of nail you know you can just get involvement of nail with uh, something like a dirt under nail which is known as nail psoriasis and then there is a gutted psoriasis something like a tear shaped drop lesions or bumps on the body and some rare varieties like inverse or flexurous psoriasis psoriasis involving only flexures like armpits and groins and a pustular psoriasis psoriasis which can be seen only as a pus filled lesions of the body and not as a scaly plaques and the most severe variety is erythrodermic variety where the whole body is involved and that is uh, known as erythroderma so these are the common types and important here is a psoriatic arthritis patient can have a nail psoriasis and a psoriatic arthritis joint involvement and they can get painful joints so these are things which the patient presents and one thing a scalp psoriasis which is often taken as a dandruff patient thinks it's a dandruff and it keep on trying and if you see closely then you can see a red scaly plaque in the scalp which also needs treatment uh, so again anything which is a dandruff not respond to treatment please think that it could be a sebo psoriasis or psoriasis so these are the types of psoriasis thank you the one point i'd like to make you know when you are differentiating between dandruff and this if the whole head is involved chances are it's more like dandruff but if patches are there which are well defined specifically and thicker then it is possibly psoriasis with no hair loss uh dr saply to uh, want to bring the question of uh, like uh, is like we spoke about the different types about the disease so are there something like is there a age specific to it or anybody like even a child even a middle aged person or even the elders can have can have any of these uh, like uh, types no it depends upon person to person there are many factors are involved so it's very difficult but usually they say anybody is getting psoriasis remain untreated for longer period it spreads and it occupies the larger surface area of the body that is one of them if there is a family history then chances are more if there are other diseases like diabetes blood pressure then chances are more so the disease severity depends upon many factors but what is important any patients of skin rash come to your clinic first you would like to find out is there really psoriasis or something else there is a condition is called atopic dermatitis which is very common in children and in adult also but can be mistaken sometimes by psoriasis as dr kandari and dr gotse says this seborrheic dermatitis or the dandruff allergic contact dermatitis there are many diseases can be mistaken for psoriasis when there are mistaken for psoriasis the first duty of any when the psoriasis patient comes to the clinic 
they have to confirm the diagnosis of psoriasis. One is from the history. Second is from what we see the clinic. What we call is clinical findings. And sometimes we need a test like a skin biopsy. We go for it if we are like Dr. Gorsey mentioned about the flexural. That means psoriasis comes in the armpits, the groins, where the two skin surfaces are brushing on each other where diagnosis is very difficult, where we need skin test to just rule out psoriasis. So psoriasis has to be diagnosed first. Once it is diagnosed, then we have to see the severity, whether it is a mild, moderate and severe, which is necessary for the treatment or the management. Uh so, so doctor, uh, like uh, uh, as doctor, uh, doctor Kandhari, as doctor Sapli mentioned about the diagnosis. So, are there any specific tests that uh, is run out to uh, rule out that this is psoriasis? Essentially, it's a skin biopsy in which uh, which can really settle the whole thing. You know, whether it is psoriasis or it is not psoriasis, it has a definite clinical and histological pattern. So when you see a slide, it is a specific pathology that you see in that, that confirms that it is psoriasis. You know, of course, uh, if it is joint involvement, then you can do an X-ray as well or an MRI. And if the distal joints are involved, then probably it is more psoriasis versus rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, Dr. Godse, like you, uh, like actually, I missed on that point earlier when you were telling, uh, like on the uh, like uh, psoriatic arthritis. So, it's like all do all the people with psoriasis would have uh, uh, like uh, the arthritis, or is it only uh, in certain cases on age groups also? Yeah, so psoriatic arthritis is one of the most painful condition where patient can get psoriasis and joint. Typically, one third of psoriasis patient can develop arthritis. And there are some pointers that somebody having a nail psoriasis will get a psoriatic arthritis. Somebody have got extensive psoriasis involving more than 5 to 10 percent of the body area is more likely to get psoriasis. And the commonest uh, arthritis, what you see is a distal interpharyngeal joint that is the fingers. Then you can get a central axial that is on the spine uh, joint pain and the uh, enthesitis that is the ankle pain is one of the commonest manifestation of uh, psoriatic arthritis. Patient cannot touch the floor and his ankle just behind the ankle, there is a tendon which is painful and patient can't touch uh, the ground and it is one of the most painful conditions. So a psoriasis arthritis is a complication which needs to be treated aggressively and uh, there are effective medications available to control the psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. But well, one third patient do get it and we should be vigilant about it, do the x-ray, ask the patient for the pain and uh, go about it. Thank you. Uh, like, uh, to discuss, like, as we discussed about the various diagnosis symptoms, uh, like, uh, what are the, uh, like, Dr. Sapley, what are the various, like, trigger uh, things, like, uh, which can actually flare up psoriasis? Is there, a, like, a, on a regular day, a person is working, they do have this problem happening, but on a regular day, uh, all of us, as you said, it can be, it can vary from one to three days, and there is a change in their skin. So, uh, what are the various triggers? People should be aware, people who already know that they have this condition. Really the first thing once they get the psoriasis is a chronic disease. It keeps on ongoing for years. And when it goes on years together, the first thing comes to their mind whether I'm going to get all right or not. That anxiety is there. And that is the important point is a flare up. So that anxiety is the first thing because you do, do not get the proper information and they're heard. There is no cure. That word will shatter their hopes and they will go, that will act as a triggering again. So that is one of the psychological or what is called, second is the support from the family, support or proper information from their doctors. That will calm down them and they will accept it. Thirdly, as Dr. Kandari has mentioned about the infection, any infection, for example, I'm, I'm a HIV clinician. The HIV, uh, you mentioned about the antigen, no. HIV infection acts as an antigen. And that can 
give rise to psoriasis. So many infection, when the patient of psoriasis, they get some infection, bacterial infection, viral infection. The disease can be aggravated, can be triggered. As Dr. Bhut says, many alcoholic, chronic alcoholics, patients are very difficult to treat of psoriasis. The reason being the alcohol keep on adding their inflammation. Diabetic patient, hypertension patient, what I mean, there is an underlying causes. All this can trigger, but according to me, the most common factor is their anxiety and if they do not get the proper information. Uh, thank you, Dr. Safle. Uh, Dr. Kandhari, just to add on to the pointers what Dr. Uh, Safle has discussed. So how can actually somebody like uh, uh, control, uh, I'm sure the anxiety, uh, if the person is aware that they're going, they having such skin disease, they obviously would be, Lord, they'll be anxious. They would be obviously doing a lot of skincare routines also on their own level as well. So what are the other various options like one can control and manage uh, psoriasis and avoid the severity? The first thing is if there is an infection, you treat it. Again, children, gutted psoriasis or small, small dots of psoriasis come out soon after an infection. So if they have tonsillitis, for instance, or they have a bad throat, you treat it with penicillin or a drug like ampicillin and the process starts settling down. So if there is infection, it starts settling down. Now, as far as the stress is concerned, sometimes you counsel yourself as a dermatologist and sometimes you take the help of a specialist, you know, like a psychiatrist or even a psychologist to calm them down, give them relaxation exercises. You know, now the problem in psoriasis is stress aggravates it. And when you get it, it gives you back the stress. So it's a vicious cycle. You see, the moment you see your skin, it gives you stress. And then you are told you know, untreatable, and you read about it in the Google, untreatable. So, you know, it gives you stress. Now, that becomes a cycle. To How to break that cycle because you really can't take away. So, you got to counsel that it's going to stay with you, but it is treatable. It is fully treatable. Your skin lesions will go away. Like all other conditions that we have in our lives, diabetes, for instance, you treat and life goes on. Hypertension you treat, life goes on. And similarly, psoriasis if you treat, life will go on for you without any problems and without any hindrances in whatever you want to achieve. You know, so these are the two main things, uh, stress and infection, which you can control. And of course, friction, you can't really control friction. You can sometimes guide a patient from alcoholic point of view, from smoking point of view, because all that can affect. And if he's an obese patient, like I had a trucker who had come to me, you know, he used to smoke, he used to drink, and he was this big. And one day he decided to lose weight. And he lost approximately 20 kgs. His psoriasis completely vanished. You know, he used to go for walks. So a good lifestyle can certainly help in improving psoriasis. Losing weight good exercise, a balanced diet. These things can certainly help psoriasis, especially if it is a generalized psoriasis. You will be surprised to see the patients lose weight, they undergo a bariatric surgery, they start doing walks, they stop drinking, and everything starts improving for them. You know, I've seen it in so many of my patients, but I'm definitely reminded of the truckers because truckers, you know, they have a very unhealthy lifestyle. Nothing against truckers, but uh, <laughs> they're, they're, you know, I think occupationally, this is a hazard for them. Uh, yes. Uh, Dr. Gandhari, you have mentioned a very important point that a lifestyle, change in the lifestyle, like as you said, uh, a obese person can reduce the body weight, uh, can start uh, the change in the food cycle, maybe in uh, the stop uh, consuming alcohol. All these are uh, like are also the triggers, as Dr. Saple has mentioned earlier. And these can actually be avoided in 
uh, like a lot of cases and it can be controlled uh, so there is uh, like uh, dr gotse we were uh, like uh, so what are the other as you were talking about the various new treatment options so are there like uh, if you could tell us uh, the treatment options available for people and, uh, and not that uh, people can go on their own and they can try this and instead uh, get, go to the dermatologist and uh, find out their right, right solutions for them yeah so the when 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 you cut down the triggers you are uh, going to benefit so with one of for stress in fact i tell the patient to go for yoga meditation and deep breathing exercises these things do help them uh, and obviously alcohol and smoking we already discussed which needs to be reduced so this is important and other things other triggers like dry weather you know people stay in ac for continuously 20 hour 16 18 hours without humidifiers it also is like a artificial winter uh, so there also patient need to be, take use humidifier or use moisturizers repeatedly because that also extreme extreme cold can also trigger psoriasis and some medications i thought that some patient like some blood pressure medication some uh, psychiatric medication can also trigger psoriasis which needs to be and last but not the least i must tell that tattoos body piercing and body art which is being used by young generation if if you have psoriasis please avoid this kind of uh painful piercing procedures because any injury can induce psoriasis so this is what we must tell uh, the patient before you come to treatment treatment is topical and systemic so topically basically what we do is that emollients or moisturizers or oil we tell them to apply to keep the area moist this also helps in most of the conditions tell the patient to just apply coconut oil that will soften the skin avoid harsh soaps strong soaps or acidic soap use a mild soap or a soap free cleanser uh that's the best way to uh, make uh, keep skin dry and apply immediately moisturizer on the body these are the essential things other than that there are creams which are available which are known as steroid creams which does wonderful gives wonderful results within 2 to 4 weeks everything disappears but this to be used judiciously because prolonged use of this steroid cream can cause thinning of skin acne like lesions or tearing of skin and bleeding so long term use of steroids should be avoided but we have luckily got other topical creams like vitamin d creams vitamin a creams which also can be used along with things so, so dermatologists are trained to use this uh, judiciously and those who have got a psoriasis involving more than 5 to 10% of the body they need a systemic treatment and systemic treatment we have got traditional treatment which is uh, the drugs like immunosuppressant drug like methotrexate and cyclosporin which is to be used judiciously to control the cell turnover and vitamin a orally acetatin but the good thing has happened to psoriasis in last 10 years there are more than 10 treatments available which are known as biologics or small molecules which actually controls the root cause of psoriasis although they are costly but they control the root cause of psoriasis and they give a faster remission and longer recovery obviously nobody can cure the disease but the longer remission is achieved and there are some small molecules like small newer medicines available this all happened in last 10 years and which have actually changed the landscape how we treat psoriasis and uh, most of the things few of them are costly but few of these medicines are within reach of a common man so obviously for all this you need to go to a dermatologist because they are trained to use these medications and they will use it judiciously but typically in a story what happens is patient do not find response and he tries to see the advertisement go for xyz therapy go for uh, some other therapy which we are not aware which is being used by herb herbs or by some uh, chemicals and which also can trigger or worsen psoriasis so obviously a dermatologist is the best person to treat it thank you can i add one or two things to this uh, ready to the opinion yes sure Uh, yes yeah, sure. first thing there's you know locally also we give a substance called tar tar is a very good substance for psoriasis and it has been used since time in memorial and tar is derived from pet- petroleum products it comes you know so it's a very nice thing also these uh, things the biologics which we have talked about the important thing is that they are targeted therapy at a particular place in which the pathology is occurring number 2 they not only affect the skin but also they affect the internal parts of the body so they decrease the inflammatory component in the whole body so the life of a patient is much more better like psoriasis is often associated with cardiac disease psoriasis is often associated with diabetes psoriasis is often associated with metabolic syndrome liver diseases 
all those tend to come down with these diseases with these medications because they also act systemically to decrease the inflammatory component thank you dr kandari the uh, uh, just to add to all your pointers uh, and i am asking dr saple about this there's like in india like a lot of people when they have any skin any skin issues they of mostly go for an ayurvedic treatment or maybe a home remedy to it so is that a good option uh, in terms of any skin uh, disease dr you are on mute in fact ridhi i was coming to you that this is becoming a chronic disease they keep on getting along and they go to doctor they do not understand they take treatment for few weeks or few months they become all right they stop it it comes again and they keep on changing doctors and they start losing faith each and every patti either allopathy ayurvedic homeopathy whatever it is there alternative so these are the patient if they do not get proper information they keep on changing or pathy from one to other but still i feel the proper will be dermatologist because the dermatologist have been trained to how manage psoriasis number one number two there are various differential diagnosis like a psoriasis atopic dermatitis there is a thin lining of line of differential diagnosis where dermatologist can diagnose other patty i don't think they have been trained about that thirdly that he did uh, need investigation like a biopsy reading of the biopsy dermatologist can read better than other so there are many points and they are managing this for many years in fact yesterday i was talking one of the one of the dermatologists from new jersey that he has got sorasis center of excellence so all sorasis patient all over uh, united states come to that centers because in america they had got a system for sorasis they will go to certain centers where they are specialized so we need specialized centers in our country also and this guideline has to has to go up to the a uh, 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 this population of the patient level because if they do not get information they do not know where to go so again i'm coming back to this a uh, chronic disease chronic disease patient are always confused and they try to go anywhere my some friend is very good in talking you know convincing he said and that doctor is very good why don't you go there i had gone to uh, uh, this patty and i became all right you know like that depends so they get they easily get converted and they go wherever they feel they can just like somebody is drowning even you saw straw you try to take a support no like that somebody said there is ayurvedic treatment there is a homeopathic treatment there is allopathic treatment so the patient will go because he wants some solution or he wants some relief so ultimately they will go with any patty depends upon your marketing because you know uh, there there are other patty their marketing is better so many patient they come sir we are going to homeopathy we are going to allopathic we were not knowing to come to dermatologist you know so they are not aware so they should be given this information has to go to general population who are the people who are the doctors who are trained for psoriasis management so this is very important i think i really today's message i hope this message will go to the population okay uh, yes sure doctor uh, just to add you while you was, sorry the, sorry yeah go ahead uh, while i was talking you know about specialized centers in jordan they have these specialized centers because c the dead sea is supposed to improve psoriasis so you know they have absolutely the whole of jordan is almost catering to psoriasis patients you know you can take a bath in the sea and it starts improving so uh, sun- is it, is it <laughs> true yes uh, in jordan uh, this is in, next to the, the black the sea th- i've been there and so as uh, kiran uh, been yeah, 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 yeah. dead sea treatment are, is you know, absolute centers uh, available there you take a bath in the dead sea and you you know your psoriasis starts improving what is there in that dead sea 
So similarly, you know, I don't know if we can really comment as allopaths about other specialities. We all approach it from different angles, and yet none of us knows the real truth. You know, that is what medicine is all about. You know. <laughs> uh just to uh, ask to all of you uh, like i have also heard about a therapy called the light therapy so is it true that uh, the psoriasis can be cured with the light therapy or is just in a starting stage uh, no uh, there are any light, comments there are light therapies what we call puva therapy or narrow band uvb therapy so these are available uh, with many of the dermatologists and also in some hospitals which can certainly help psoriasis Uh, so it is it a thing? Is. is it a thing that is it cured or uh, it's like uh, See, the word it? cure can be used where you know exactly what is causing the disease. So we can treat it. It's treatable. We have retreated this aspect that it is treatable but not curable. Okay. So you can certainly give relief, and I think in most of the diseases, doctors, what will they do? They give relief to the patient. i mean the truth is known most of the diseases barring infections is predominantly known by the lord <laughs> uh, almost coming to an end a very important aspect we want to discuss is about the awareness about the disease so how actually we all can create an awareness this question is for all three of you like on a like a, a like the various levels how people should actually uh, not even judge the other person that they have skin disease a lot of us have this tendency that somebody is having a skin issue we always judge them that they have certain sort of a skin issues and we start asking them uh, like being curious we ask them directly that and the person feels offended and as you said a lot of people go in hibernation mode for 21 days and they don't come for work so how can we change the scenario especially in india about the psoriasis uh, dr sakri i would uh, like to start yeah ready before going for this i would like to add the yes, treatment sir. of psoriasis now is well defined if you treat patient properly counsel him properly initially you can bring the disease under control then you can maintain it and then you can prevent it If this is the three way you manage i got a patient for last 20 years they are doing very well without getting any relax or what is called without having any symptoms so but what is important is a counseling to them giving the proper information planning their proper treatment and the patient follow i can tell you their disease remain under control and uh, without any side effect because many times they said you are taking the drug for there are certain drugs you can take for 10 years 15 years without any side effect but we got to know and we have to prescribe properly and monitor them now what was your next question yeah how to how to create awareness 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 see the awareness first has to be among the doctors there is a treatment and we can do it after doctors then the awareness has to be among the patients and thirdly it has to be general population each and everybody must get the information what is psoriasis whether we can treat or not whether there is any treatment or not so all this information has to go to all level doctors level patient level and general population now you are asking question how to take this information to everybody correct so there are many stakeholders the first stakeholders are the for example dermatology is a responsibility of dermatologists also to form a, the we have association the association has to see that the information has to go the doctor has to be trained they has to be given and that is happening through conferences and the cme program where doctors has been trained for what is updated or the latest treatment so that is done then secondly the pharmaceutical they should come forward and they are also doing lot of work but we have to uh, we have to take them in the awareness program thirdly all our national program is there now the ayush ayushman program is there 
they are working so it has to be anything disease which is causing national problem has to be a national program like leprosy eradication is a national program so the government that is government should also come forward that is they they are the main stakeholder because they are the policy maker they are implementer so they should also come forward they should also realize the importance of this disease and of course there are media like you people so is everybody's responsible uh, responsibility to take this message to general population can i add something uh, to you dr saple you know i yeah. think the most important thing is to have a sorority society in india you know we don't have that all over the world most people have a sorority society which you can go on the net and ask them questions about whatever you want to ask that society must is a must i think that we have to form in india we don't have a registry we don't have a society i think that's where we are really lacking and we should do that uh, besides of course what you have talked about very nicely and of course the media is there you know for the dissemination of the whole process you know like i what i do is i call psoriasis people to my clinic and sometimes we have a psoriasis clinic in which i call them and they can ask each other questions Uh, about each other and then if there are doubts then i am always there to sort of answer their queries and we also have slide shows for certain diseases and the psoriasis is one of them in my own clinic which we have so we have group discussions of psoriasis with the patients so you know things like that have an important aspect and a good reward for you when you are treating a psoriasis patient i think dr kandari now we are in the age where we are supposed to give back to the society am i right at any age <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, not only totally at our age at, at any least, age yeah if you have missed it so you have suggested very good so why not to form the society society all of well, us and uh, start working know, uh, murli and i have been saying this for years but nothing happens <laughs> yeah just no to add to this uh, let me just to have this thing a uh, psoriasis support groups are important and they has to be there in each uh, district or in each hospital so we in a hospital we try to have psoriasis support group where people meet and discuss their ideas so this is one way to go about other way obviously the society and uh, third most important is the social media which can be used judiciously to spread the right messages and our association iid well does that we have a website where there is information about psoriasis Where all the patients can log in and see and the thing. So this thing will help a lot to spread a message that psoriasis is treatable and controllable, but not curable. And the various newer effective medications are, are available for the patients, uh, which they can use. So obviously, your IW Council can take initiative and spread this message across. Thank you very much. thank you so much doctor uh, just on a closing remark uh, as we discuss all the various pointers uh, like your closing remarks on this doctor saple who oh, you are asking me yes yes i would uh, like we would yeah. be closing so uh, or the uh, closing remark from all of you three like uh, on the various topics we have discussed the, like psoriasis is is very common we get almost every day patient of psoriasis and this is a chronic disease even there is no cure definitely we can treat this patient and patient can live good quality of life without suffering from psoriasis but they have to go to proper consultant or the proper doctor that is that is my message to everybody Uh, Dr. Kanthari, your closing remark. Yeah, my closing remark is this: that psoriasis is today a systemic disease. We have to bother about that aspect. Number two is, it's a treatable disease. And number three, there are good drugs, the good hope of a good clearance in psoriasis. So these are three factors i think which we need to understand about psoriasis the most important is the last one there is hope now for psoriasis 
Dr. Gotsi, your closing remarks. So psoriasis is treatable, so don't lose hope. It is manageable uh, differently, and the newer medicines can actually control the root cause of the medicine. And in soon, maybe next twenty years, we can get a medicine which can actually cure the disease. But till that, go to dermatologist and treat it, uh, and give the get the best results. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. And as we discussed, like uh, how important uh, to is understanding like the disease, uh, like it's a, it's a systematic psoriasis, it's a systematic disease, and it is mostly it is treatable. As you all three say, have uh, a stress on this part, it is treatable and uh, it can be managed. And creating an awareness among the people uh, is very important. And uh, going to a right dermatologist and not taking a medication on your own. Uh, as this might also uh, like increase the disease or maybe also uh, create some other problems. Uh, so I thank you, every uh, thank uh, all of you uh, for joining us today and discussing. And uh, on behalf of the IHW Council, I would like to thank all of you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you and bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.